Uh, ni hao. Ni hao. <laughs> uh, China, um, there's a couple issues that I'd like to, to talk about today. Um, but first, so that uh, our viewers can uh, get, get to know who you are, how did you and I meet? Well, I, I work at Marine Valley Community College in the web development department. And I had a, a co-worker who had said that a uh, faculty member had contacted them needing some assistance with a website. And so I, uh, I looked up the website as he, he knew what it was. And um, then I said, well, okay, give me the instructor's name. I'll just send him an email on his Marine Valley email account and say, I do web development, and if you'd like to meet, I, I work on campus, and uh, let's meet sometime if you're still looking for a, a web developer. And then you and I met, and you told me kind of a long list of things you wanted to, to have and change and go towards, and yeah. That was back, I think it was in January of this year. It was, um, and it, this goes back to something that I say to every one of my classes in any time about um, what Lynn Swan talks about, about no pain, no gain. Right. I had somebody do my web page for me, and then he quit, and I had a student do it, and he left. And it just was going chaotic. And I asked the old webmaster to fix things up, and he deleted tons of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's, I, I, was, I was at my wit's end, and when I called uh, Moraine, they uh, we got together that way. And, and one of the things that interests me about um, your technique of um, being a web designer is um, you are absolutely honest with everything that you do with me. And you, um, <laughs> the first couple of weeks, you would. I'd call you and say, well, can we do it this way? And you said, well, we can do it this way. And I said, well, let's do it this way. And you would, your first response would be, I've never done that before. I'm not sure I can do it. Mm -hmm. Less than 24 hours later, I'm getting an email from you. I just figured out how to do this. All I do, and you tell me how you do it, which makes no sense to me, nor interest me, but it's getting done. Sure. You did that once or twice, and then when I come up with some new crazy idea, mm -hmm. And you say, uh, well, I've never done it before. That absolutely flies over my head. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm sure that you've written it, but I don't care about it because I know damn well that the next day I will look at my web page and there it is. Mm -hmm. So that interests me about you, that how one is you're absolutely honest and you deal with the pain of not knowing something by going out and addressing it somehow. Sure. So I want to know, from a psychological point of view, mm -hmm. where did you get that that modus operandi to to try to, uh, to to know? I mean, there are lots of people who will go out and BS you and not know and mess it up. But you have a, you have an ability not only to be honest but you also have the intellectual ability to go apply your problem or your pain, and it comes up with, my web page I'm happy about, it. I'm absolutely happy about. It. So I want you to explain to me and to the viewers um, where you get that. Well, I guess um, what I think about when you're asking that question is that um, I feel such a confidence in the information and tools that I have available to me um, online. And sometimes I think I say that I don't know how to do something because I don't know how to form the question to say, I would like to do this technical thing, either with a web page or with software. I don't know how to do it, but I also don't know how to put it into words in order to form my question to uh, accurately find an answer to what I want to do. But once I can formulate it correctly and do an accurate search, I, um, 
it's almost over. Uh, it's incredible how often you find exactly uh, someone else who has done exactly what you're doing, and they have documented it. They either have written a blog post or in a forum or an article about how to do how to implement something technical, and so um, it. It's maybe not as grandiose as I'd like it to be, but really, everything technical I want to do online, someone else has done on another website. And so I look at their code. I, there's a way you can look at the source of a web page and see their underlying code. And then I, you, can, you can use it. And um, you have to massage it and make it work in your environment. Uh, but so much of what I've done on your website, like let's say the pictures for your travel, um, in that you have a kind of ticker tape of thumbnails that you can scroll through, and it, when you roll your mouse over, you get the new picture. I didn't know how to do that, but somebody else, actually when I went searching, there was 25 ways of making an album in a similar fashion. So I looked at all of them, and I said, well, this one's a little clunky, this one's hard to implement, this one requires I have an individual page for every image. But once I found the one that was right, and I sent you uh, an example, and we discussed about would this be right for you, then it's just a matter of taking that source, putting it on your website, feeding all of your pictures in, you know. So it's just, uh, I like that process of, of finding a solution and then making that solution work in my, my environment. Um, yeah, so I think that's... What, what intrigues me about that is that, and, and, this, and, and the flip side of this is, I'll get to in a second, but what intrigues me is that you are left brain mm -hmm. for orderly, linear thinkers. You, go, you want to go from A to B, and you start at A, and go to it is an exact straight line. Sure. I'm just the opposite, I'm right brain, mm -hmm. and I'll do it convoluted way. I may never even get there, mm -hmm. but in the process, I'm having lots of fun. Sure. So when you're telling me about how you go to you know, read the code and things like that, that just, I, Bores you <laughs> I, I, not, not that you said it. It's just no. that I couldn't do it. Oh. I mean, I, I, it would it would bore me to do it. Sure. And yet, what we're able to do with the web page is you're able to give me the linear material. Mm -hmm. I'm able to give you the artistic or creative material. Right. And those two blend, and it's <laughs> right. That, that's so true. I, I really like the um, underlying details of organizing because you, a writer and a photographer and an interviewer, you have so much content. and uh, So much content that I may never get to all the stuff that <laughs> it's in front of me. Sure. And there are so many ways to organize that information in meaningful and logical ways. And I, I really enjoy, um, I guess, you know, in the web design, it's called information architecture. How do we architect this information such that it's easy to access, organized, intuitive, and um, when I started working on your website, you know, I thought, well, there's pictures here and there's pictures here. Let's move all the pictures into a folder called images. And then, and then forever, when I'm working on your site, if I know that I'm dealing with pictures, I only go to one place. And I, I love that. I love that organization. <laughs> it's, it, and, and it's interesting because I'm, I mean, so far to the right in my, my, my Mr. Thing. But there are certain things that I love to do and I like to have things work like me in the classroom. There are certain things that they have to do and I'm, I'm, a, I'm as organized or probably more organized than even you would be sure. in certain rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. But I love to look at my web page and see the order once it's gotten down. But I'm glad that I didn't have to do it because I wouldn't have gotten asked at a moment. Um, the, the question that I would have is, um, where, do you, where do you plan to go with your, I'm leaving quite frankly, when you said something to me, when we first met at Moraine, you said something, I do the, the back side. Sure, you know, what right. Oh, well, uh, I guess in web, design and development, you're either more on the design side or you're on the back end side. Okay. So um, I'm not much, I don't have much background in design. So okay. 
layout and graphics and color choices and image creation and things like that. That's not my strength. I, I enjoy more someone saying, here is this content, here is this data, here are the images, here is the color scheme that I want, these are the buttons, how I want the buttons to look. You put it all together and you make it function and, and then I make the back end function. And okay, but what do you do for work? I mean, I, know, I understand that, but what is it that I'm the president of Marine? What are sure. you doing for me? At Marine, mm -hmm. I work. Um, I work mostly on internal sites that are not the forward-facing website. So when you go to MarineValley.edu, that's not a site that I work on. Um, that's kind of owned and maintained by the marketing de uh, department, mm -hmm. and I work um, on our internal portal which is for faculty and staff to log in, get information about their courses, their students, um, their records, and internal documents for the college. And then I also, uh, one part that I really enjoy is uh, my job is helping different groups and organizations if they need, um, like the library has various blogs, the library news blog, the search tips blog, the green blog, and so um, I help set up those blogs I update them, I turn on features and functionalities for them. We just have created a wellness blog for the wellness program at Marine, and that was a new uh, blog that needed a new design, a new functionality, and um, so I, I also help entities on campus. Well, as we get through this interview, you're mm -hmm. going to take me, I'm going to take you to my webpage, uh, not, not my webpage, Marine's webpage. Yes. And they just converted to another version, version of the uh, platform. Oh, sure new version of Blackboard. The man who sits next, next to me at work, he maintains Blackboard. Yep. So I think, I think what I, the conversation I have with, with my folks actually about new versions of things. So oftentimes my mom will call me about eBay. She'll say, eBay's been updated. I can't use it anymore. Or it's extremely hard. Or Facebook has changed. I can't figure out the new interface. And I know with Blackboard changes, faculty members that were used to doing something a given way semester after semester it's been a hard adjustment but I think software can't stay the same way always and hopefully it's improving but the learning curve and it's very frustrating so and and, and artistically I mean from a you know the old blackboard you had two options the one that was already up there or one you could jazz up the one I jazzed up looks better than the one that I jazzed up in the new environment, in the or new, new version, uh -huh. and then and then and my on the grade book, and it has a little little logos that are next to the numbers. Yes, and that that disorganization. I mean, the, the grades are off there correctly, but right. that, when but I look at that board, I think, what the hell are they doing? Yeah, we so can definitely look at it. We will definitely look at okay. it. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so you, how long have you been working at Marine? I about a year and a half. fact that half a, half a year into your, almost a half a year into your employment, mm -hmm. we met. Right. That is the best thing that's happened to me. <laughs> uh, and the, the, the question I have is, uh, a year and a half, I me mean, you're, you're young, I mean, you're young enough to be my daughter, but um, we're where do you see yourself going at Marine, or where do you see yourself going professionally beyond what you're doing today? I mean, I would think that two or three or four years from now, you will have figured out all the little bits and the little pieces and, the pieces and gotten all the pieces together. Sure. What do you want to do after that? Mm -hmm. Or what do you think you want to do after that? Right. Well, um, I guess my kind of ideal working environment is I like to work mostly in independently and on my own. So I think that um, I guess I, I think about it, hope that maybe one day I could work for myself, for folks on their websites, and help them either create new websites. Uh, give a face look and a new design to an existing website they have, or add new functionality to an existing website that they have. And I think that um, 
that would facilitate me to um, then when my husband and I start a family, that could be a job that he could have the more <laughs> scheduled going to work, and I could be, I could be more flexible because uh, really I can do that work anytime, and um, I, I really enjoy I enjoy working with people on their sites, but I I don't need um, all the the contact throughout the day. So if I could work at five, yeah, if I could work fact, at lots home. of our stuff even on weekends is late at night. Right. Right. So I think ideally, you know, I have on my own personal website, I have a portfolio of maybe a half dozen uh, folks that I've worked for. And I think I need to kind of go back, look at the other projects I've been on. And then I haven't really made much of an effort to go out and seek new clients. And I think that that's something I need to maybe focus on a little bit more so that I could maybe one day have the independence to be able to do that. And, and what, uh, are you comfortable giving up the uh, page? Sure. Uh, my, my existing web page is chinawilliamswebdev.com. Uh, although I just did get married this summer, so I purchased chinadostal.com, and I just need to move the content over from the from my old web development to the new China Dostal. So. And what would the, uh, the email address be? Well, uh, my email address I've used for years and years is chinatherose at gmail.com. My childhood friend called me China the Rose because that's my first and last middle name. So. And mm -hmm. speaking of uh, speaking of China, um, when and I don't know who it was that emailed me. Maybe it was the guy that works next to you. Sure. And they said China Williams. I, I, I mean, I, I teach lots of classes, and, I, and the ethnic diversion in the classes is wonderful. I love. Right. You know, the last thing I want is all, you know, seeing the same kind of person. Right. And I saw China. Oh, got somebody from Asia. Uh huh. <laughs> sure. Um, how did you ever get the name China? Well, um, I and guess. how do you know about me? How? <laughs> I got two answers. Well, my um, the the true story of why I named China is that um, my mom in the '60s, I guess it was the late '60s, she was uh, married to a musician and lived in L.A. And her husband's band, um, I guess, opened for a number of different bands. And I believe she once met Grace Slick. Uh, because her husband's band was opening for Jefferson Airplane, I think. <laughs> and um, Grace Slick either had her daughter named China or there shortly after had a daughter named China. And uh, my mom really thought that was a beautiful name for a girl, a little girl. And so I think she kind of lodged that in the back of her head. If I ever have a daughter, I would like to name her China. So. And uh, who were the other children in your family? I have three. And, and, and their names. That's, what, <laughs> that's why I'm interested. Sure. I'm not interested in the details. I think sure. if your mother was gutsy enough to do that, mm -hmm. the other kids. Right. Are My oldest brother is Jeffrey Calhoun. So Jeff's fairly common, but Calhoun's a little bit different. Now, then and what was the basis of Calhoun? Is that a family name? I think it's a family name, yeah. And then uh, there's my the next brother down is Sebastian Balf. And I do not know where Balf comes from, B-A-L-F. That's, I'll have to call her this afternoon. <laughs> and then my next brother down is Aaron Virgil, and then me, China Rose. And Virgil? You know, I, I, I should know these stories more. I, I can't think of why Virgil. I mean, that's a, you know, it's, it's old Latin. Right. I so, need to get these stories down. <laughs> and, and but your, your mother was married to somebody who was a, a, a musician, being a musician. Right. Mm -hmm. What's her um, What's her interest? What did she do? That? Well, um, when she lived in LA in the '60s, she uh, did a number of different things. She uh, was a seamstress and made her own dresses and sold them. She uh, Worked in law offices. She did bookkeeping. Maybe she a dress design. Was this a flower child? Uh, yes. Yep. <laughs> so when, so she is uh, fairly close to my age. Yes, she was born in forty-five. So she was a flower child. 
Yes. And, and how, what is she like now? Is she still, I mean, you, you certainly didn't know her when you Right. You know, I, think, I think so much of the flower, flower child that she and my dad, you know, they built a home, um, you know, off the grid. They wouldn't drive at night because they didn't want to kill bugs. They were, you know, vegetarians and they were very, very, um, very much big hippies. So, but now she's, my mom's great. She's very creative, very artistic and very talented. She does amazing projects and uh, she's very uh, good with graphics and she uh, is a, still a wonderful seamstress and her crafts and her creativity, she has so many great ideas. When I just got married this summer, she did so many beautiful aspects to my wedding. The invitation, the program, um, so many decorations that the, the gifts, the, the favors. I mean, she's extremely artistic. I, I don't have any of that creativity. <laughs> it's, it's interesting that, that the mother and the daughter are, I mean, she, she is more in common with me than she has with you as far as creativity versus linear thinking. Sure. And that's it. Did that ever cause problems for you with her or with her or with you? Right. I think she has said before that she finds that I am, um, you know, like when she cooks, she does, she'll look at a recipe and she'll say, I think it's a little bit too much flour. Oh, and you know what? It should rise more. It needs more baking soda or baking powder. And then she'll call and say, I'm kind of disappointed with this recipe. And I said, Mom, did you follow the recipe? And me, I don't, I only follow recipes because somebody else has tested it and I don't have to. I just benefit by someone making a great recipe. And then I'm always happy, <laughs> and so I, I'm really strict with those types of things, you know. And mm -hmm. she's she's you more asked loose. Her for the recipe, she said, "Don't have it." Made it up. Yeah, yeah. I, that's been. I mean, <laughs> we have to have your know, Graham over and your mother and father over here sometime. That that would be great because there's a lot of similarity between the way I cook. Uh huh. I'm married, and and Anne, uh, Anne will cook. She prefer to have somebody else do it. Sure. And I would rather, I'd rather do the, the creativity the in, the, in the kitchen. <laughs> sure. But do anything else as far as linear thinking. Uh huh. But on the other hand, she is very cute. She does web development for her eBay listings. She gets in there. She figures out how to write the the code for her listing in order to make them very beautiful and aesthetically pleasing. Uh, she's very smart uh, and super capable. So she also is, is logical as well. <laughs> but but it's, it's logical because I have to do it because of the creativity. The creativity is the thing that's pushing it. Right. And the thing that's pushing your linear thinking is uh, I want to do it that way. That's the right way to do it. Right. She's being forced and I'm forced into doing stuff on the internet uh -huh. because I have to teach. That's part of my issue. But I don't really care about all the other peripheral things, right. and 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 sometimes, and I'm saying this to you because you'll come up with, and I can do it. I I would like to go, and I, I mean I, I can do Word, I can do uh, PowerPoint, I can do some Excel, I can do some of these things that I need to do to get by and get. I'm teaching, you know, I don't teach a class without PowerPoint. Right. And the, the issue for me is, uh, I, I've never taken a class in it. All I've done is done what your mother did, figure this out so I can get where I want to go right. and leave it at that. Mm -hmm. I would like to have a class in, I'd like to have a class in Word. You can take my class. I teach at Marine. Once a week. <laughs> it's, when are you teaching? Uh, I teach uh, Information Management Systems Class 101. It's called Introduction to Computer Systems. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, there's three sections to the class. There's a hardware section. And then the, the biggest section of the class is the software section. And we do we start with Word. And we go to Excel. Then we do PowerPoint. Then we do um, um, Access, the database product uh, from Microsoft Office. And then the last section is a uh, uh, one you, in, in your halfway through it now. Right. But there's a lot of sections at, at Marine. There's, I think, five sections a semester where you can 
uh, take IMS 101. And you will be teaching it next term? I, I should be, yep, Wednesday nights. So um, it's it's really for someone who has never used those products before, and um, yeah, I, I know I could work with you, and sh you could tell me the things that you need to do, and I could t give you uh, lists of these are the, 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 the ten most useful things to know how to do. Mm -hmm. Maybe make you're working with those products. One of the things that drives me crazy, and, and I forced myself to learn it in the old word, mm -hmm. and now I have. Was it? 2010. Uh -huh. And I don't know how to do it, but I, I teach philosophy classes, and Soren Kierkegaard is kind of God for me. Aha. Uh -huh. And I can't figure out accents. how to. Yeah, the accent. Sure. So after the interview, we have a no. list of accents. No problem. Computer. I'll give you the cheat sheet how to do all of them. Okay. Um, we talked a little bit about your family and your brothers. Can you tell me something about what's happening in your family now? Where are they and what are they doing? Well, I, uh, there's, there's five kids all together. I have four brothers, and they all have girls. So we have seven. I have seven nieces. Any boys? No boys. So there's a lot Sounds of little like girls. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, the theory is in my family is that most likely I'm the only girl. And everybody thinks that when I have a baby, I'm going to have a boy because all my brothers have had girls. So, yeah, my grand, my parents don't have any grandsons, just granddaughters. So, yeah, everybody's got little girls, and uh, yeah, all four of them have a child or several. <laughs> and uh, so, what, what do your parents uh, think about grandchildren versus children? Well, I know that um, when we all still lived in California. My one brother, who's two older than me and age Sebastian, he had a baby girl. And at the time, my folks were um, had sold their business, and they had a lot. They had more time, and they actually had her one day a week, and then they'd often have her up for weekends. And they were crazy about her, and it was really nice because they got to start taking care of her, you know, every week uh, when she was really little. And so I think there's, of course, my parents are close and love all their granddaughters. But right now, you know, three of them are in Boston, one's in Westport, some are in California. My parents live in Indiana. So when she, my parents had the opportunity to really be close to one of their granddaughters and help, you know, raise her, really, um, it's just been a really special thing for them. And they're, they love being grandparents. <laughs> and they have, they have the three that are in Boston, Baltimore. They have them about once every, uh, every summer for a week, just, you know, and they take them swimming and have just a great time with those girls, so. It's just interesting when you, when you get to, uh, when you get older, uh, when you, you raise your children and they're on their way, you have fun doing it and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the grandchildren come along at an older age. Mm -hmm. so it's a different world mm -hmm. and it is, man, so it's really exciting. Sure. Um, what I'd like to do is kind of wrap up. Um, I'm just kind of jumping around, but wrapping up. Uh, you were talking about your family and talking about particularly your parents. And where are they living right now? Uh, my parents live in southwest Indiana in a small town called uh, New Harmony, Indiana. It's about, if you know, southern. Indiana. It's about 30 minutes west of Evansville. Okay. Well, we're going to get the politics a little bit about southern, southern Indiana. Right. Um, what uh, What do you think they, uh, what are they doing, how they function? Right. Well, um, my dad works quite a bit. He uh, splits his time really between his uh, his space in an antique collective in downtown New Harmony, and it's uh, it's a an occupation that they find a lot of joy in. They like to go to auctions and buy old things that either need a little sprucing up or a lot of fixing, either furniture or uh, objects, items, and then they they sell that in their store in, in town. And my dad does quite a bit of uh, furniture restoration and refinishing. And then they also help folks 
choose colors for their homes, uh, doing color consulting. And then my dad also helps uh, paint those homes. So he's worked for a number of families and people in town uh, painting their homes. And your mother? My mom doesn't work as much. She sometimes will sell on eBay, and then she helps my dad with um, getting items fixed and ready and good to sell in their store. She kind of does a creative take on some of their unusual objects. She'll, uh, I know she, she acquired a lot of small items once. She buys them all up with beautiful a beautiful label, and they were just oddities, and they, they sold. She, she sells buttons, she sells aprons, tablecloths. She uh, is very creative. They actually have a line of cards. They sell cards that she, they're from their photography. Um. So they're they're creative and they're always doing something different in their store. <laughs> and when will they be coming up for so <laughs> when coming, will we be going down there? Sure, so? sure. The New Harmony is a great place to visit. It's a beautiful community. Um, the reason I say something about politics is that um, I'm, I'm kind of surprised where Indiana is. In the, I mean, it's a northern state, but right. it's more of a mid south. The Chicago, I mean, Northwest Indiana is Chicago right. suburb. If you get out of that Chicago suburb, you're really into the mid south, right. politically and mentally. Uh, what do you know very much about New Harmony as far as where they are politically? Right. Well. Um I know I visited my parents in, I guess it would have been the 2004 election, and I remember trying to count up the number of Democratic presidential signs in the yard versus a Republican, and I was pleased that there was it was a fairly close match. I think one or two more Republican than Democrat. So, um, yeah, I guess it was Kerry and Bush, and I counted the Kerry and I counted the Bush signs. And there was two more Bush signs, but there were some Kerry signs. And so I think that there's there's a mix. I know I visited recently down to see my parents, and they've got an Obama sign in their yard, which uh, I didn't do too many trips around town, so I'm not sure <laughs> what the, uh, you know, the, the state of it is now. But I, I think that coming from California and uh, having lived there for so many, my, my whole life, and most of my, my dad's entire life and most of my mom's adult life, it was an adjustment moving to Indiana as far as, I think maybe in California, it's so predominantly liberal that you don't talk about it because there's nothing really to talk about. Same with religion. You just don't talk, did not talk about religion because either folks weren't religious or they were, but they didn't talk about it. So it was definitely an adjustment moving to the Midwest um, and having that be just more at the forefront of people's interactions. That was an adjustment for me. Yeah, and, and I, I know something about your, your philosophical background and politically, but it, it's just strange to me that, that, that uh, democracy is such a wonderful thing, but it assumes some kind of intelligent electorate right. that is thinking and reading making decisions based upon reason and it just rattles me that, that we're so disconnected in, in outside of the Chicago land area and it's just it amazes me that, that I mean but give us something about you know do you want to talk about Murdoch's uh, Comment about right. I guess we're bacon or right. centaurum or any of them. Sure. Yeah, I guess I just um, I find it disheartening when I hear things like that because I, I guess I I just take for granted almost the uh, freedoms and choices and opportunities that I feel like uh, we have as women that are accepted and established and. I almost don't even have any fear about them going away because they're so kind of ingrained in my uh, my consciousness. So to hear something so uh, I don't know, 
know what's the right word, just um, close-minded or limiting or extremist, as, as the comments that have come out in the last uh, few weeks, it, it's just really discouraging and makes me want to make sure that I definitely vote and as much as I can speak to the people in my life to encourage. <laughs> And, and isn't it strange that, in fact, you're going to get an article in another couple of days, we post it, uh -huh. um, and it's about women and male sexism, and it's it's always, with, it, with their few exceptions, it's always men telling women what is right for them and what is not right for them. Mm -hmm. And I would think that as a woman that would irritate the blaze of them. Sure. That, that uh, you know, I don't care that you don't get raped, but whatever happens is God's will, and you know you should view it as God's gift. Sid Torum has done that. Murdoch has done that. Ryan is a supporter of that. Aiken. Yeah. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's not. I mean, I, I get it that there's a there are a couple of idiots out there. Right. I don't get it that those idiots have followers. Right. So many people. Absolutely. Yeah. And yes, I, I know I was listening to the radio just this morning, and I think it was, um, you know, you, you hear the cheers in the background when folks are, are, are sharing their views, similar to, like you just said, and it's, it's, it's really difficult and sometimes hard for me to think, why would you support that? Why would you follow that? It's just a completely different ideological. <laughs> Yeah. Or and, and, and the, and the it, it's it's I, I I don't understand why they follow it, but I don't understand why um, so many women have. I mean, they've learned to be second class, uh -huh. and um, and whatever has been told to me about I'm a woman, whatever has been told to me about what makes me function the way I am and how I should function. Is told to me by men. Right. You, you will not have an abortion. You will not do this. You will not have contraceptives. You will not get this. You will not get that. Because I'm in charge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if something bad happens to you, well, that's God's will. Don't worry about it. Enjoy the gift. Right. Yeah. I know um, I went to an all women's college for my undergraduate um, degree, and it was. Um, it, it was a, a single-sex undergraduate, but our professors were of both sexes, and it, I, it was an interesting time for me to be in a classroom with only women and studying math and computer science, and I, I really felt like that was a, a wonderful opportunity and space for me to, to study and to be um, just treated equal because we were all women in the classroom. So. Did you see differences between male and female professors? You know, so many of these professors I had at Mills had been there many, many years, and so I think they were very much uh, dialed into the all women's college um, kind of environment and, and how to just treat everyone as equal opportunity learners or. <laughs> So, yeah, the, the sex didn't have anything to do with it. Right. You just go beyond that with teaching. Right. Uh, it just, and, and I'm, I'm having, I'm wrestling with why this is becoming such a big deal for me at my age. Why shouldn't I just sit back and coast and right. take care of a couple of grandchildren? Sure. <laughs> yeah, the thing that gets me so uh, frustrated is the, the talk about, you know, defunding Planned Parenthood and what a role that parent, Planned Parenthood plays for, for so many women and, and giving access to contraception and being able to control that portion of their life is just such an empowering and important um, a, you know, resource for women. So it's, it's yeah, a little frightening. Planned Parenthood and, uh, and uh, PBS. And right, yeah, for sure. It's just... Uh, But that, and one of the interesting things that, that you have done for me on my webpage is you've been able to 
put the video clips in not as hyperlinks, right. but as embedded. And I'll tell you, you you look at the old web page, which you have a copy of, and I don't particularly want to see it again. <laughs> you, but you have a copy of it. You can see how 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 much different the articles look with that ability that you've been able to apply to uh, right. the articles and just making that rich that media a little bit more or that content a little bit more rich with media you know that does give a, uh, a kind of a much a multi-textured experience to your readers and and also you worry when you link from your site to another site that they're going to hop there and kind of get distracted and not really finish so it's nice that they can stay on one page and read to the bottom <laughs> yes uh, there's the the other issue about um, the the internet and and, I, and, I, I, and I, I'd like to have your spin on it because my spin on it is that it's beneficial to me and so I use it and blah 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 What's interesting to me is that, and we've had the internet for a number of years, but it seems now it's more prevalent in um, fact-checking. Uh -huh. And that if, if I say, I'm a politician, I say something out in the media, that I ought to know that that's going to be recorded. Right. And that it'll be played back and played back and played back. Right. Um, and that everybody in the United States and much of the rest of the world has access to stupid things that I say. Right. Explain to me from from your angle about the the kind of the uh, how much the internet has affected us politically or, or any other way mm -hmm. because we have so much. I mean, I can remember professors at the end of a semester back in the scheme where I went. Going to the library with a with a load of Trump papers, uh -huh. and what and what they were going to do is check all your sources. Yeah. <laughs> sure. And uh -huh. now and now I can go through somebody's term paper. Well, Moraine needs to go to termin.com. DeVry has done that, uh -huh. and man, that saves so much time. Right. Turn it. I mean, if, if anybody from turning one, termin.com. Once this is an advertisement, they are free to use it. <laughs> that speeds up this, the process, and you say to students, you have to register and turn in .com, and I will get that back in a nanosecond. And it's, it's kind of like going to Wiki, because it just, you post it, it comes back down, and has all the data in there, where it's come from, where it's been used, and it just saves time. But I want you to tell me about how do you view the internet and what that does to our Weltanschauung or our world view about how we do politics or how we do education? Right. Well, the thing that comes to mind first is I was listening, uh, I believe it was um, a podcast that I've subscribed to, and they were discussing that in a recent presidential debate that Brownlee cited that one of his plans had been reviewed by uh, six independent studies, he mentioned a few times in the presidential debate. But it turned out that several of those studies were blog posts and um, kind of just uh, someone writing online about their opinion of it, and there was very little foundation to those studies. And so I think that, yeah, it's... Um, but does that, does that mean that, that for, my question is, does it mean that he isn't aware that people are going to check that? Is he, is he disconnected that way? Right. Because sometimes things happen with politicians and you're just so surprised that they would say something when they know that there are millions of people out there that are going to say, really? Is that true? And go find out that, that that's not true. So, And I, my, my concern is I think that maybe he, that he and others uh, may not know that. I mean, right. really know it. They know it intellectually. but they, I don't know how you couldn't. You know, it's... And, and that goes back to the other right. issue, but there's, <laughs> there are lots of people that are going to vote for somebody, and I'm not care about Romney particularly in this situation, but vote for somebody regardless of what they say. 
uh, they, but that other people aren't picking that up. Right. That they ought to know that. Right. I mean, this thing about it is thing about flip flopping. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have. I mean, you put it in, or I've asked you to put it in one of my articles about his flip flopping on all on the on healthcare reform. Right. Because, I mean, he was he was ahead of the curve in his state in, in the country right uh -huh. and then and then Obama takes much of what he put down and he doesn't want that because that's and and, and the other issue maybe you want to talk about this also how do you feel about the whole issue of states rights that everything all you can do whatever you want based on the state but not based on the, uh -huh. the federal I guess um, I am not much of a, of a studier of politics, but just my my uh, instinct is that I believe that I guess I don't see a difference between one state in the United States versus another as far as establishing uh, policies and programs and rights, and so I. I, maybe it's idealistic, but I have a lot of confidence in the collective um, problem solving and reasoning. And so I sometimes feel like when politicians are asked about gay rights or other various rights, they say, oh, well, we would leave that to the states, to the individual state. And I, I guess I, that doesn't sit well with me because I don't, and maybe I understand culturally how a state on a, either coast would be different in some respects, of course, for they're all different, but in fundamental uh, programs and policies, I just, I don't see why we would just put that off to the state and then let another group of people, you know, dictate what goes on in that state. So, no. um, 150 years, but well, the, the Civil War was a state's rights issue. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I mean, slavery was. Sure. And after the Civil War, we had segregation, which was a state's rights issue. Uh -huh. And schooling, and who got school, and, who got, and this goes back to Southern Indiana, some of the schools in Southern Indiana. But then you further go into the Mid-South and then Deep South, and man, I'll tell you, there was no education. The equal but uh, separate in education. Just states' rights is just a poor excuse for right. doing what I want to do. Right. Even if it's not right. Mm -hmm. I agree. It just uh, But um, one one other um, thing that I wanted to touch base with you on is uh, we were the, the, my web page was pretty well back up to where I was happy with it. And you started talking about Facebook and um, I thought well, she wants to do something on Facebook, but I don't care. Sure. I didn't tell uh, and, and my problem was and was that I've had a, a web page for decades mm -hmm. and there weren't people that were blogging back when I that thing came up. I had a web page and I was doing all sorts of things for my college where I was teaching and personal stuff I wrote for a newspaper and put those, paper, those articles on. Um, so I, I really saw myself as kind of on the cutting edge of technology, which is kind of strange. Um, and then, then you know, 10, 20 years later, Facebook comes up and you were talking about it, and I wasn't really sure where you were going. But I trusted you, so I said, "Do whatever you want." Give me, teach me, or inform me about what's happening and why that's beneficial to me. Right. Well, I guess that there's there's a lot of different ways and reasons that that's beneficial to you. So maybe I'll start by saying, um, right now as a person with access to the internet. You just it's just a fire hose of information. And there are is so much 
great content out there, but how do you get it? How do you maintain your own list of, oh, I like this blog, I like this website, I like this store, I like this entity, I like this university. There's just so much content. And I think what Facebook allows me personally to do is to say, I'm interested in these six, eight things. On Facebook, I will search for that thing. Let's say uh, it's an outdoor activity or a game I like to play or you know, I like to play bridge, I like to uh, cook, I like to do... So I search for those things online, on Facebook. And then if I subscribe and I say that I like that activity or event or entity, then the content that they're creating gets pulled into my world on Facebook. So not only do I see what my family members are doing, my friends and my coworkers, but I also get interlaced with all of that information. The hobbies that I'm interested in, the, the political groups I'm interested in. And so when they write a new article on their web page, which it could be anywhere, I never have to check it. I never have to remember to go there. Um, they just say, I've written a new article. They post it on Facebook, and because I've kind of subscribed to them and showed my interest in them, it will show up in my unique world, my unique view of the world. And so I just sit back, and then the content comes into me. And if I say, oh, that blog that I like to read, have wrote a new, uh, new article, I click on that, and then I go to read it on their web page. But um, so for me, I, I like that it's, it's just a, it's an easy organization for me to say, I want to keep up with my brothers and sisters-in-laws and nieces and all those folks, but also all of my other interests. So it, it organizes it. So for you... So it's an organization of, of uh, communication Right. For you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then in, in, for you, you have all the, the entities that would either not know that you had written a new article. And so if they have said, I like Wolverton Mountain, I like what Al Campbell's doing, they have said on their page and in their world, I like Wolverton Mountain. Mm -hmm. So that then when you write a new article, you go on a trip, you post a new album of photos it will show up in their view to say, oh, he has a new album. I wonder where he went and where he photographed. So they can click on it, and then they're directed out to your website. They can look through your content. And then, um, so I think it's it's great exposure for you. Um, and um, when somebody likes you on Facebook, then all of their contacts say, oh, my friend, like Wolverton Mountain, I wonder what he's about. Or, and so they click and then they go, are driven to you. So it's a good way to drive uh, viewers to you. Okay, a apart from me, that, that seems like a wonderful way for the, for the United States or the world to communicate. Mm -hmm. The downside of that is, I mean, in, in, for liberal for liberals, you mm -hmm. say, well, you know, liberals will get all the information but the, the counter side of that is that's also a way of consolidating information tools for, I'm not concerned about conservatives, but the, the extreme right wing uh -huh. on sec things about sexism and racism uh -huh. and gay and those kind of things. So how, does, how do you, so, so we're opening, opening a doorway, we're opening also a kind of a Pandora's box. Do you mean uh, in that so if I want to communicate stupid ideas, I can go to Facebook. Oh, absolutely. Facebook. Right. For sure. Um, I guess one thing that, I don't know if this is a concern, but I also just curate my own world. If I don't like a friend who espouses a opinion that I'm not interested in, I simply hide them, and I almost never think about them again because, you know, and, and I also don't subscribe to... Um, news pages or blogs that are different than my own opinions. So I just create more content that supports what I already believe. So is that what you're but, saying? But yeah, but aren't you? But okay, so that's you. We're cloning you. Mm -hmm. So we have another China. Uh -huh. And China is right-wing, non-feminist, non mm -hmm. And so what we're doing is creating another uh, communication skill for the intellectual riffraff uh -huh. to be each other. Right. And, and, and it seems... It just seems like 
we're going back in the same direction we were after the Civil War and all through my high school and college years of this whole civil rights movement, the civil rights movement had to work against, at that time, not the internet, but that kind of uh, database that was used by the, the racists and those things in the past. And the, and the liberals just never seemed to get going fast enough. Uh. And, I, and I'm and in, in, in the face in Facebook and all those programs out there now seem to be the cutting edge of everything and I'm not sure whether we're just speeding up the process not only getting good ideas out but also can perpetuating old ideas. Sure. So I where's it gonna go twenty years from now when I'm gone? So so I understand that you can channel and, and you can delete and you can Right. protect yourself from a lot of garbage. Uh -huh. But other people are looking at that stuff that we see as garbage and saying, oh, thank God somebody's put that in. And so that's informing the uneducated elector. Right. I don't so know. So solve that problem with yeah. the tree. <laughs> Obama's going to win this election. Hillary's going to win in 16 against the Uh-huh. Um, so you might want to consider 2020. Uh, <laughs> I'll get right on it. <laughs> yeah. and, and just you know, you'll you'll have me. You'll call me tomorrow or email me tomorrow and say I've got this worked out. Maybe I'll be trying to dot till 2012.com or no, 2020. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but, well, actually, it will really be 2024 because okay. Hillary's going to have two two terms. Two terms. All very well. So 2024 of China. <laughs> but it, I, I see, I see that I understand that I benefit from my web page, my ideas, um, and, and maybe, maybe the maybe the issue is give out all the information to everybody, and maybe we will educate ourselves and say, well, maybe what I was thinking isn't right. Maybe I. Maybe we ought to let women have equality, right, right. or blacks, or Hispanics, or whoever, right. or gays. Right. It's just I guess the, the problem that you're proposing, if I understand it, I don't think there's a way to control that, or change that, or it's, it's just such a massive amount of activity and content and opinions and the amount of data that's created every second. You know, there's some amazing statistic about how many minutes of video is uploaded, uploaded to YouTube, uh, or how, how many hours of data is uploaded to YouTube every minute. It's astounding. I mean, there's just, you know, you're saying, how are we going to reach people that have an old way of thinking? I, I don't know. I don't know. In, in, you know, I was, I was concerned about this, and I was, then I was starting to think about but speaking of you, uh, China, thinking about what the Chinese are worried about for the internet, uh -huh. and their worry is, or their worry is, that if we don't control the internet somehow, their control will be yeah, they're, they're going to lose control of right, right. a huge population of the world. Just, just a few days ago, they shut down large portions of I don't know if it's Twitter or their equivalent to Twitter in China about one of the politicians who got found out that he had all of these riches. Mm -hmm. And so in order to just uh, stop the discussion about it, any tweets or searches in regards to this politician were just shut down. So that's... So maybe I really, shouldn't worry as much as I, as I do. And maybe they're, maybe the, the flip side of my concern is really their concern. And maybe they're uh, acquiescing on this. Uh, maybe. Uh, Proof that um, we don't, I don't have anything, or the world doesn't have anything to fear. Yeah. But it goes back to again the education of the people. Uh -huh. I mean, I don't care where the people are. Right. And you, and you would think that the more educated people are, that they at least hopefully they're more thinking ahead and thinking of the broader picture than the kind of just me in the world. Right. Sure. 
Sure. Well, this has been... Mm -hmm. Oh, one other, this is one other thing. Um, you, you were talking about you you doing web pages and, and architect and that kind of material. Um, what what does Graham do for a living, and where is where are his hopes and fears? Um, well, he um, got his degree about two and a half years ago in library science, and his master's in library science, and he has been working uh, at Moraine Valley Community College and he is the government documents librarian at the college. And so Morning Valley is one of the government documents repositories. So he kind of um, curates that collection of government documents. And he, um, he loves being a librarian. I mean, he gets so excited about um, helping students. And then he also, he does a, a variety of things. He also teaches library instruction. And um, he works at the reference desk. And then he's the government documents librarian. And then uh, actually just two weeks ago, he applied for a full-time job because he's only been part-time at Marine. So he just got a full-time job at Tinley Park uh, Public Library as a reference librarian. Mm -hmm. And then it's really a big deal for us, um, for him to have this full-time job. So he's excited about it and uh, excited about, about some of the new programs that they're um, you know, talking about and uh, helping patrons and the community have more access to technology and different programs within the library. So, yeah, he's... And, and uh, how, how far do you live from a mile-wise from uh, Tinley? We are, I believe, we're 11 miles away from Tinley, and we're 8 from the rain. Oh, shit. So, it's, it's not too bad. It's about a 30-minute drive for us to get to rain. So... Well, that's good. Well, I you know, tell Graham that I'm um, happy that he's uh, come to Tinley. I spend a lot of my time in Tinley. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful library, and he's he's thrilled. So. No, they, they, I mean, I've been to downtown Tinley maybe four or five times. Okay. Most of the time, it's just off of Wither, West Creek, sure. Parkway, where uh, the Rise will be. Is there anything that uh, that uh, that we either touched upon or uh, we we didn't get to at all that you would like to uh, comment on? No. Mm, maybe I just I think that working on your website has been um, a really kind of a fun project because it had a lot of different components that needed to be upgraded and you have <laughs> the entire site <laughs> <laughs> well and also that you just had so much content uh, you know the funniest thing when I first started working for you and you gave me the password so that I could log in and FTP down a copy of your site I it was a Saturday and I started I, I just selected all and I pulled it down to my computer and there's a little thing in the status bar that shows how many files that are, you're pulling down. It was 25,000. And I just sat back and I thought, there must be something wrong with the program that's counting the files twice, or I'm going to let it run. So we went and ran errands. We went out, did something. I think we came back four hours later. It was still downloading. Because while there's 25,000 files, they're not just text files. A lot of them are large images. So the amount of content that was there, I just thought, oh my gosh, I don't know where to begin. It's just, I don't know where to begin. And um, so it was just really fun to first try to understand what was there and then figure out how do we want it to look. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not a designer, so I know you and I had a lot of iterations of, do we like this color blue? Do we like this color yellow? Do we like this font? Do we like this header? You know, there's just a lot of parts that slowly, slowly became to come together. So, and now when I do work for you, I know the file structure. I know where everything's located. It's I, I know he's written an article. It goes here. So it's it's it was taking a, a big mess of, of you know dropped blocks and just organizing them all the way I, what I like to do. <laughs> so have you seen that in your life in any other one? Oh sure, 
Sure. Can um, you give any examples of oh, I, how you like to organize? I'm embarrassed. I, I like to. I like to organize every single piece of paper. I like to say every single piece of paper my whole life from anything I can put my hand on in like two minutes. I know where everything is in my mind. And also, oh, I like, go to my <laughs> You know, like my mom, she takes a lot of photographs. She takes beautiful photos. She can never remember where they are on her computer. She will call me at work and say, uh, do you know where that, do you know what year I took that, whose birthday was that that I took that photo of? And I say, if you had your photos organized in a chronological way like I do, you would never call me. You'd always be able to put your hand on, you know. So my photographs from, I got a digital camera, I think, in 2004, and they're organized so that I know where things are. <laughs> it's just giving me a lot of peace. And I know it's a silly thing, but it's... Well, I, it's a silly thing, but sometime when we get when the web pages up and all organized, you're going to be invited over for an afternoon, and you're going to go to my... Sure, we'll sit together, and I'll say... Well, <laughs> I'll go out and row and go out on my kayak or something, and you can just sit there and put it all where it should be. Sure. But it is, it is really dangerous to let somebody that is not familiar with the computer and the processing right. organize things or disorganize things and then start getting used to those disorganized places. And another thing, actually, is that somebody's organization doesn't work for somebody else. Like you know, the way you think about something that makes intuitive sense that if I asked you a year from now, you'd have the same answer. You know, the, the, those are not equal mindsets for people, I find. Well, it's, it's, but, you know, and one of the things, I mean, when, when I've, been, I've been writing newspaper articles for over a dozen years, and I haven't, I haven't done it for a couple of years now, but. I got so used to organizing them and putting them in the doc, 1988, 1999, 1999, mm -hmm. and just and organizing them, and then, then it is easy. Right. I can remember when you couldn't you couldn't put very many. It was eight characters yeah. or something. Yeah. And you had to. Yeah. Right. But it, it's 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 interesting that you 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 find joy. Doing things in an orderly process. I'll, I'll do it only because I have to, mm -hmm. because I won't be able to function teaching or anything else. Right, right. But this has been a, uh, this is, I wasn't sure about how to do these interviews mm -hmm. um, um, on the video, and this has turned out to be a very profitable yes. one. Mm -hmm. A good learning experience for me. And um, I, I'm trying to go to, um, I, I will go to Scotland um, in the uh, spring and uh, hopefully interview the new uh, First Minister of Scotland, Evan Mastanen, who would like to see Scottish independence. And then at the uh, at, uh, next winter break, uh, Christmas from now, um, hopefully go to Burma and do the same with, and do a video, same thing, the interview with her on Sunset Shady. Sure. That will be wonderful. Oh, so I just remember it was a good time we had. Yes, getting, with getting China. <laughs> but uh, thank you very much. Well, thank and, you uh, for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. Well, it is my pleasure. <laughs>